Hey what's going on guys, Turty Wurty here and welcome back to another Forge modding tutorial for Minecraft 1.17. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how you can make uh, an item that has a special function. So I haven't covered this yet uh, and I decided it was fairly important to cover this so that is going to be what I'm doing today. So the first thing you obviously need to go ahead and do is create an item as usual so let's come into our item in it and let's go public static final registry objects of uh, for now I'll just leave this as item but we'll change that in a mo and we're going to create um, well I'm going to be creating an item that you can click a block and it will destroy that block and then it will move that block to where you next click so it's it's rather complex but that's what we're going to be doing i'm just going to call this clicker it doesn't really make much sense um but i don't want to give it a stupid name uh, and that will be equal to items.register and i'm going to call this clicker obviously you can make whatever you want so not a clicker probably um, and then that would be a supplier of a new and I guess we can create the class so the class is going to be a new clicker item and obviously that will take in the properties like normal so I'm just going to copy it from up here save a little bit of time and let's also go ahead and replace clicker item over here as well there we go, just like that. Now we can go ahead and create this class. So let's go into our common. And I have created a package here for item. And in here, I'm going to create our clicker item. And this is going to extend item. Make sure you do the right item, of course. And finish. Okay, and just add the constructor. Let's rename this to properties. There we go. Get rid of the to do. We don't like to do's. Okay, from here, you can go ahead and override any method you wish. So there are tons and tons and tons of methods. It would take it would take hours to go through all of these. Um, the main one, which I think most people are probably going to want to use, is use, and that happens when you right-click in the air, and there is also use on, which happens when you right-click uh, on a block, and then there is also, um, I don't think there is like left-click specifically, so you've got like left-click entity, which is when you hit an entity. And I think it's like on block start break. So that's when you start left clicking a block. I'm not sure if there's one for air. Let's see. Um, on, on entity swing, I'm pretty sure is, yeah, when you left click the air. Um, and yeah, there are tons of methods as I was saying uh, another really useful one is inventory tick so that allows you to do something uh, every tick whilst it's in the inventory and this is also how you can check uh, this this boolean right here is for checking if it's selected in the inventory so the one I'm going to be using mostly I guess here is use on And I'm going to start writing some of the logic for this.
Okay, so as you can see, uh, I have now gone ahead and done all of this code. Uh, there's quite a lot here. It's likely not going to work first try. I haven't tested it yet. So uh, I'll try and go through what happens here. So let's go first into the use on method. So that's when we right click a block. We go ahead and create some variables uh, from the context. Uh, and then we check if the player can or cannot in interact with that position. So if we go into this can interact method, first we go ahead and get the dig speed for that block, so how long it would take to mine that block. Then we check if the player is in creative mode, then they can instantly interact. Or if they can build and the speed is greater than zero and less than the max value, that means that they will be able to mine it if this is true and that they can place if this is true as well. So then we can come back down to here. Obviously, if that's not true, it just fails and exits this whole thing. Then we come over to here. We check if um, the tag so this is basically MBT that we're messing with right here. Uh, we check if the MBT contains a compound called our mod ID. And I like to do this. I like to have all of my custom MBT stuff in its own uh, compound tag. That's, that just makes more sense to me. Uh, keep it separate from anyone else who is going through MBT. Uh, it, it just makes more sense. Keep it separate. If it doesn't contain it, then we go ahead and just put a blank compound tag in there. Then we can just get the compound tag. Then we check if whether or not it contains uh, a, another tag called contained block. So that would be the block that we're storing. If it doesn't, then we check if the block that we're clicking is not air. And if it's not air, we go ahead and set the block to air. Um, have I done this the wrong way around? Wait. Uh, oh, no, 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 that's fine. So we set it to air so that we can remove it from the world. And then we can go ahead and put the state that we write to MBT uh, in the contained block tag. And then we just return success because it worked. Um, then we come down to this else if, if it didn't work. Um, and we can check if the state can or cannot be replaced. So this is if we already have a block in there, since uh, this will have already passed or failed, I mean. Um, so we check if it can or cannot be replaced by just constructing a new place contact context from our use context then we just set the block at the position with the nbt that we read from the compound right there and then we just remove the contained block from the nbt so that we can start this whole process again if we ever need to now obviously you might not be clicking on a block when you uh, want to try and place it down so we have created the use method which is basically just a replica of this use on method but without all of the place stuff um, I'll just quickly rush through here so we initialize the uh, stack so we get the stack um, and then we get a result from the uh, ray trace so we're essentially creating a ray trace uh, since this doesn't uh, have a block bound, bound to it because you can be clicking air then it might not be a block so obviously there's no block supplied uh, so we have to go and get a block by ray tracing which we use this method right here for um, and then we just get a block state from that position we check whether or not we can interact um, whether it's air and whether it cannot cannot be replaced right here uh, and obviously if all of these fail then we go to fail and it returns. Then we do the compound check for our mod ID again. 
uh, if not it fails then we check for the contained block if it doesn't have that it fails then we come down to here and we can get the state from the MBT then we set the block in the world and we remove it from the MBT and return success because at that point it works the final thing I went ahead and do and made it so if it contains our contained block then it will have the foil effect so that's basically the glowing enchanted effect that you have on like enchanted books and stuff like that so that should be pretty much it we can save this let's go back into our item in it and let's just import clicker item at this point all we need to do is add it to the lang create the item model and run the game so let's go into our lang first of all and let's create our item dot tutorial mod dot clicker and this is just a clicker i guess i don't really have a good name for it so that's just what it's going to be uh, we did name it clicker right i feel like maybe i changed to something else did i change to something else let's see so no i did i did keep clicker okay so in here we can create an item model this is just going to be a normal item model so i'm going to copy our existing one and obviously this is clicker.json let's open that make sure we change it in here to clicker and i think i'm gonna make this handheld although i'm not sure whether it would look better handheld or not handheld um no i think generated i think it needs to be generated um yeah i think so so then let's check that the texture is here which it's not i just need to refresh there we go and we'll see there's my texture um let's go run the game shall we okay so as you can see i am now in the game let's just full screen this right here and we have the clicker item which i just got from creative tab now if we go ahead and right click this block you can see it removes it and it does indeed uh, go ahead and make it enchanted i think if we go f3 and h maybe we can see yep it does have the tag so then if i go ahead and right click it places it back down there you go and this should also preserve block states so as an example if i go ahead and i will be covering block states very soon if i go ahead and grab a seat pickle I place three down I guess and pick it up and place it back down it does preserve the three now obviously an adjustment I might want to make to this is so that you know um, I can place it on a block like this uh, however I, I didn't code that in uh, it should actually be very easy to do um, but yeah I haven't done that I should be able to also replace stuff like these so that's nice um, so yeah I mean that is pretty much it obviously you can do whatever you want with this you, look you can even do that that's great and I should be able to see that I can't do it with bedrock let's actually check that um, but yeah saved by the sea pickle let's go um, so yeah if you guys did find this tutorial useful uh, or you did enjoy this tutorial please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and subscribe if you really enjoyed please do be sure to share it and uh yeah i will see you guys in the next tutorial good bye Wait, what is that?